Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our annual holiday spectacular, December to Dismember. I am, of course, Excalibur, joined as always by and Rock. By Christian Rock himself. We're going to apologize for any major issues that we have. We're trying to get one of our. We're trying to get a third commentator to hop in. We're also trying to fix Mikey's monitor, or Christian Rock's monitor, rather. But hopefully, things will work out, and we do got some huge matchups tonight. We got about an hour and a half of action for all of you guys this holiday season. And Christian, I am so excited for tonight. He would be too if he was talking, but that's okay. Coming up in our first match of the night, it's Rhino taking on Joseph Fatu. Joseph, Joseph Fatu looking to defend the ECW World Television Championship that he just won a couple of months ago against none other than the War Machine Rhino. So this is a revenge match. Uh, no, actually. The, uh, Rhino got a win a couple of months ago against Tozawa, and now he is the number one contender for the championship. Oh, now Fatu on his way to defend the championship against Rhino. And, uh-oh, there's Rhino backstage. and oh, He's talking to Mox about he's getting something. Ready. Yeah. Well, Moxley, uh, of course, making his debut a few months back and uh, targeting oh, Rhino. Oh, no, there it is. And the two are starting to break out right here in the back. Oh, no. Oh, dirty D. Rhino's... Oh, dude, Rhino's not going to be 100% for this. He's definitely Hang on, right. I got to make a phone call. I got to make a phone call. There's no way he's going to be able to compete. I got to find a quick replacement for this. 911. Yeah? 911, what's your yeah. emergency? Indeed, Rhino. Just getting attacked backstage by Mox. We'll oh, see ladies and gentlemen, we have we just got a call. That we have finally found a replacement for Rhino, real quick. Just this immediately, because we, we need to get some security to break that up back there. Oh, well, already we have a good thing we brought extra people to the show. We did. <laughs> That'd be we awesome. absolutely. I know. Everybody loves a good stagehand. Well, speaking of getting the hands right now, let's see who's going to get these hands from Fatu. Could it be? Oh, wow. Woo, woo, woo. It's Zach Effin Ryder. Wow, what a, what a great substitution there for... <laughs> As uh, Zack Ryder looking at the opportunity of a lifetime to win this championship match. We all know Zack Woo Woo Ryder, a former ECW alumni, one of the hearts and soul of ECW, some would say. Wrestling in between the years of 2008 and 2010 for the brand. Ladies and gentlemen, look, we have someone joining the commentary booth right now as we speak. Who are you, good sir? Hello? I'm good. How are you doing? I've been here. That's quite silly. No, I mean... There's... No. There's nobody else here. I Nobody... If there's someone was here, they'd be talking. That is true. But ladies and gentlemen, we are about to get started with this television championship match. Can't wait. And here... So, somebody has... Something going on. There's some music. Good evening, son. I'll tell you something. My name is a good old Alabama. And I'm here to watch some pretty good wrestling. Uh, oh, I told you there was someone at the desk. Yeah, I just arrived oh, fast really late, you know, because I'm Alabama, the greatest commentator of all time. Well, we all know everybody from Alabama oh, is a little slow anyways. I'm glad you made it, Alabama. Uh, roll to, damn time! Welcome to the table. I'm glad you brought your phone in for your entrance music, too. But we got a huge matchup right now as Fatu defending against Zach Woo Woo Ryder. 
Ah, fought too. Great defensive tackle out of America Samoa. Hell of a great player. And now uh, here of we course. go. Nice shoulder tackle there onto Zach Ryder and Fatu in control. Guys, don't forget to vote for who you think is going to win this matchup. One for Fatu for to retain, and two for Zach Woo Woo Ryder. And I believe I Did cut you, you know? off, Mr. Rock. Yes, uh, Joseph Fatu, of course. The son of Rikishi Fatu and younger brother of Jimmy and Jay Uso. So, of course, jo Joseph and Zach Woo Woo Ryder look, uh, looking to have a great competition here tonight. And Alabama, I believe Zach you were cut off. Yeah, well, as I was saying, son, Zach Ryder, great quarterback out of the beautiful University of Long Island. Five star quarterback. Hell, the wrestler, though. First of all, you are not. I am not your son. Please, you are not my daddy, sir. Secondly, you're right. Listen, you, you, you do what I'm telling you to. You do what you're told, son. Well, daddy, oh my God, yeah, damn, uh, Hall daddy, of Famer, I have to agree it. with you. Zach Ryder is one heck of an athlete, and now Woo Woo going to the outside, and it looks like he's going to try to introduce the first set of toys for tonight's matchup. And, of course, ECW oh boy. Eastern Championship Wrestling, known for its hardcore shenanigans. He, he, we put the E in Eastern, as Ryder looks like he brought a ta table out here. That's right. I'm he's so about to set up a table, damn it. And now Woo Woo sending Fatsu into the corner. Zack Ryder! Zack Ryder! Oh, sheesh. That was low. And now Fatsu. That was... Huge clothesline from Fatsu. Sending right now Ryder having to escape to the outside. And now here we go. The oh. two are now fighting on the outside. And uh, Christian Rock. Was that built, bring it to an advantage for, for Fatsu? Well, honestly, it's kind of a disadvantage because this, at least Fatu kind of had Rhino scouted, but maybe, I mean, his advantage uh -oh. probably would maybe. Rough Rider. Oh no! One, we could have a new champion right two. here. No. Oh. Sorry, oh. Sorry to cut you off there, Rock, but uh, holy moly, that Rough Rider—he went head first onto that table, not set up, thankfully. I would have done a lot more damage. Now Zach going up to the top rope. As him up and a leg drop misses the Tennessee Jam. Or as he calls it, the Long Island Traffic Jam. Uh oh. Fatu now hit the ropes. Scissor him! Scissored him! Right in the ring. Oh my goodness. Alabama, have you ever been scissored? I don't know what that is, son. And where I come oh. from. Big we spot. look upon, we look, we down, we front upon that. That Uso and Slash. It. It's over. Three count there. Joseph Fatu, your winner, retaining. Fatu! Fatu! Against, Fatu! Against Fatu! Woo -woo. Why are you yelling? Roll against damn time! Oh my god, why does he keep yelling? Against Woo Woo right We have this uh, great victory there, and it looks like uh, we gave Alabama a little bit too much Red Bull before going to the cup. Yeah, and I think somebody uh, spiked this Red Bull, that. too. The Tennessee whiskey. Of course. But a uh, great victory there for Joseph Fatu, and uh, long may he reign as television champion. As long as we stay on TV, we will always have a TV champion. And tonight, it's still Joseph Fatu. And folks, it's time to head to our next matchup of the night. And of course, we got to switch arenas for this one. Because we're heading back for a Ring the Bell Wrestling 2007 Twitch TV Championship match. Fletcher Jr. defends his championship against Apollo Low Cruz. It's Apollo Cruz, uh, a, a Ring the Bell Wrestling 07 massive alum. I mean, he was part of the original uh, cast for the show. And uh, looking to win the good old Twitch TV Championship here from Fletcher tonight. Yeah, of course, a Paul Hulo Cruz, a former hardcore champion, and no other title under the lineage for Ring the Bell uh, Wrestling. So, this could be his opportunity to pick up some gold for the first time in years, it seems like. What do you think about Apollo Cruz, Alabama? Apollo Cruz, one of the best wrestlers out of 
the great state of Georgia, from the great city of Stone Mountain. Very talented player. I was going to say, normally don't people from Alabama hate people from Georgia? Football That's true. I don't like the Bulldogs, but let's be honest here. Apollo Cruz is a very good talent, and I respect that. I, I mean, so I, I don't coming out, I mean, coming out with the scepter, um, of course, uh, taking roots from Nigeria. <laughs> I well, mean, that's part of where carry those scepters around uh, Georgia all the time. Not that I'm aware of. Huh. I've never been to Georgia. Yeah, you're missing out. Atlanta's a beautiful city. My ass. Either way, folks. Gentlemen. Introducing next, he is the Twitch.tv champion, Mike Fletcher Jr. Uh, one half of the F Mike and Mike connection. Mike Fletcher Jr. looking to defend his championship tonight, as well as his tag team partner, Mikey, who has to defend it, defend it later tonight in a triple threat. So uh, Ooh, maybe geez. tonight we'll have... Man, I didn't know we had could afford Pyro. We shouldn't for Fletcher, but holy moly, good for him. And now here comes Fletcher, the longest entrance in wrestling history. Who, uh, who does? Uh, I was like, I was gonna say, who decided to fund for this entrance? I have no idea, but the Twitch TV Championship on the line. We just had one TV title on the line, and now the other one. Opening up the show here, Fletcher, of course, winning that title from Gene Snitsky at a live event uh, months ago, defended it once, and now has the opportunity to defend it again tonight you're, against Apollo. You're damn right, son. Fletcher had resilience in his last match against Gene Snitsky to become a pretty good Twitch champion. Tonight, he'll have a tough test against Apollo Cruz. But I think Apollo Cruz will take the strap tonight. Wow, bold prediction. Uh, Christian, do you have anything for your for yourself? I think it's going to be Mike Fletcher Jr. I mean, I'm pretty sure Mikey gave him a pretty good pep talk before his match tonight, saying that, hey, we're the Mike and Mike connection, and we can win any match that we want to. And and uh, I think Mike Fletcher's got that confidence in order to be able to defend his... Uh, Championship against the Nigerian Prince tonight. Really, so you going for Fletcher? Interesting choice. Introducing the challenger from Bidway State, Nigeria. And now here we go. Time to make time for our ring announcer tonight to make the introductions for the in-house crowd. Apollo Cruz, excited for his first opportunity at this championship. Of course, this championship introduced at the beginning of Season 2. And arguably with, uh, <coughs> with the, 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 the slowdown of the company, we have not had as many title defenses as in years past. But it is the holiday season, and you know what that means. It's a crossover show. I hope the, our third annual crossover show of December to Dismember starting all the way back when uh, the pandemic struck us so uh, it's really good to see that these two here tonight are putting on a show for these fans here defending and I mean just competing for one of the richest prizes in our business that's right you remember the first December to this member show was back in uh, 2020 of course with Charles Chungus becoming the first ever holiday champion. Last year, uh, we had the addition of Florida Water Wrestling, where The Undertaker defeated Randy Orton to take away the Florida Water Wrestling Championship, and Batista from Florida Water Wrestling becoming the holiday champion. And of course, guys, in our main event, we will uh, have the holiday title on the line. Batista defends it against four other men, including... Santa's little helper. Wouldn't it be five other men? Well, plus, sorry, sorry, plus Santa's little helper. And a nice German there from the Nigerian prince. All right. Of course, Apollo Cruz just taking control here. 
Just give it oh. all he's got. But he misses the axe handle. Fletcher though counter and a nice suplex there. And Alabama Oh my goodness. Alabama, That's you gotta, miss, son. gotta love what you see so far out of this guy. We call that in Alabama a botch. I mean, they call it that everywhere else too, but I can I I, I appreciate the, the statement there in a well, one count. Shows you that we are not all as different as different as we think we are. Let's unite as a country. Let's love each other. We are the world. As Apollo Crews. We are the children. Uh oh. Apollo Crews catches him and a nice tidal wave. Oh, uh -oh. Fletcher now with the counter. He has him. And DDT. And the pride of all over here. Punishing Apollo Crews right now. Providence looking to retain that championship here tonight. There you go. Nice stomp to the chest of Apollo. Into the cover. And you see there Fletcher, very smart, puts his body in between Apollo Crews in the ropes trying to get that three count. That great ring awareness there by Fletcher. You see Fletcher. Now, Sorry. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Is Fletcher the longest reigning Twitch champion? Uh, technically, yes. Because, uh... There's only been other, like, three other champions. And he hasn't defended. And there we go. Sharpshooter locked in, but the rope break is called by our referee. I was going to make a note about his ring awareness there, but unfortunately didn't <coughs> realize that the rope right there oh my god i hit the wrong button apollo cruz with a power slam and Cru cruz getting him up spiking him picking him up angle slam olympic slam into the ropes but apollo cruz has all of the momentum let's see what he can do with it oh, no. oh. Gorilla Press, and a slam. Cruz goes to the top rope. Is he going to pay off? Frog Splash. Oh, oh this could be it right here. Fletcher Jr. Three, it's over. That's how you do it, son. That's how you do it. We got a new One. champion. The greatest product from Storm Mountain, Georgia. Apollo Cruz just took home a very nice title belt to his hometown of Atlanta. Apollo Crews, your new Twitch TV champion. As I was going to say, Fletcher has a huge <coughs> tag team title opportunity coming up in January in Ring the Bell. But I, I think he probably should have focused on this match first. As here we go, folks. ECW Women's Championship match is a four-way tables match. Natalia, Emma, Sarah, and, a, and Mickey James. Mickey James looking to defend the ECW Women's Championship here tonight against four other competitors. Uh, this is her first title defense. Let's see if she can be able to defend it in a tables match here. And folks, let me just confirm because I might have let a little bit of a cat out of the bag there, but announced right now for the January RTBW show, it will be Mike and Mike the, the new Hollywood blockbusters, or the old Hollywood, no, just the regular Hollywood blockbusters, and the Disney Alliance all, cha oh, wait a second. Oh, it's just a flashback. All challenging the prestige for the tag team championship. And there you go, you see here, yeah, Mickey James winning that championship after pinning Natalia in the center of the ring. Yes, of course, Mickey James winning that championship last October and this is her first defense, so. If this one has anything to say about it, it will be her last defense. Here is the hugging criminal. It's Sarah. A serial hugger. Of course, hugger. the hugging. Of course, the serial hugger. Uh, I mean, look at her shirt. Hug is for hugging is for champions. Well, she ain't a champion yet, but let's see. If anything happens, and here she comes, the woman that 
Mickey James defeated for the championship, Natalia Neidhart. Or some people say Natalia Needleheart. Who <laughs> exactly? It's a Canadian thing. Is it? And here she is, the women's champion, Mickey James. Of course, hardcore country Mickey James looking to defend her women's championship here. Everyone just sprinting to the ring. We make no mistake about it. We understand that we're on a time uh, a time crunch. Everyone should just hit straight to the ring here. So, here we go. Yeah, I mean, I love it. I, I didn't even record these matches, and I love the fact that they're so fast. Christian, I gotta ask oh. you, who do you have winning this women's four-way matchup? You know what? Put me down for Mickey James. Oh, the uh, champion to retain. I mean, maybe she can be able to uh, trick each other into turning on each other and maybe <laughs> use that to manage to put someone through a table here tonight. That would be smart. Alabama, what about you? I'll go with Mickey James. Right. I think she'll uh, retain as well. Well, that sounds good to me. We'll see. If both of you guys are correct, we'll find out in just a minute. As you guys can vote at home, feel free to vote in the chat below. And here we go, folks. The match is underway. Mickey James throwing fists on the right. Emma taking care of Natalia on the left. And folks, there's a lot of action. We're gonna do our best to call it. As as we can say, this match is typically majority of the time chaos. And hopefully we can get someone through a table here tonight. Hopefully. I mean, I would love to see this match up forever, but uh, we got like a bunch more matches left. So <coughs> we gotta we gotta pace ourselves here. Mickey James now up on Brett's rope. No, that's Emma on Brett's row. Emma with a drop kick. Uh, yes, they, I mean, uh, uh, Mickey and Sarah are on the outside. And Sarah was just clubbing her, uh, Mickey in the face earlier right by our commentary desk. Yeah, and I'm getting a tweet now coming in. Alabama has no clue what he's talking about. Two for Needleheart. So we got another vote for Needleheart. And Bama, somebody putting you on, uh, on blast there. That Mark doesn't know what he's talking about. I know what I talk about because I'm goddamn Alabama, the greatest Hall of Famer of commentary history. Yeah. Roll what, time. What what Hall of Fame are you in? The pro the car wrestling commentary Hall of Fame. Interesting. I didn't even know we had one of those. No, no, it's exists. a very exclusive club. I guess so. Oh, oh. beautiful tag team maneuver there is Emma drop kicking me. Uh. Natalia, while Mickey James giving the Hurricane Rana. Nice, nice tandem offense there. As uh, we got a table on the corner, I wonder if someone's gonna go straight through it. Yeah, all four women are very, uh, they are very aware that that table is in play, and that could be the end of the match. You saw Sarah trying to whip Mickey James in the corner, ended up missing and getting the wrong corner. And there she is, missing the corner again. Unable to position Mickey James's body in the right way to get her into the right corner. This might be a little problematic if Sarah can't see which corner she needs to go to and put, put Mickey through the table. Well, there you go, she just moved the table. Hopefully that could uh, allow her to aim in the right spot. There we go. Oh, Mickey James on that table. Is this gonna be it? Uh oh, Ezra, Exploder! It's over! It's over! No, it's an elimination. We got a new match. champion? It's an elimination. Oh, it's elimination. <laughs> and there goes well, Mikey James. She's I'm gone. a little disappointed now. I was so happy. I was like, it's over. Amos. Sarah's the champ. And then, uh. Wow, but either way, our champion has been the first eliminated in this matchup. That's something to also be I pretty excited about. New champion tonight. I get. We are gonna have a new champion. It's, oh my God! I just saw. I, I see Natalia wins again. Pain oh, looks like geez. Emma hit her in the back of the head with a chair earlier. Oh, and Emma again with a chair. Holy moly! And now Emma 
Going under, looking for another chair. Emma, this is a tables match. Oh my goodness, onto the back of Sarah. So, so my question is, if you put set up a chair in the middle of the ring in a chairs match, if you go through the chair, do you win? Question mark. Well, if the if uh, if you get put through a chair, and the ending means that you get put in, through a chair, then yes. However, eighty to ninety percent of the time, that's not how chair matches work. Chair matches are basically pointless. But Natalia, they really are. Natalia. With a nice double axe handle from Brett's rope, just like her uncle. And Natalia with a go behind. The most... Hook her up. Nice! This overhead suplex. <coughs> My goodness. This has been a fantastic women's championship match. Yeah, we still got three women left. Apparently, this is elimination. Not in my notes either. I guess it was to, because uh, it, oh yeah, here it is. Uh, elimination because we can't have a match end in 30 seconds. Okay, oh, that's fair enough. Anyway. Okay. Well, Emma looking for a table under there. Couldn't find one. And now Sarah throwing her in the ring and Sarah's looking for the table. And she can't well, find looking one. Looking for the table. Oh, Natalia grabbed one though. Oh, there we go. And now Emma also now we have our table. going to the outside looking for a table. Oh, or she's yelling at the crowd. I guess one of the fans kind of told her that she sucks and then just took exception to that. And there we go. Now Sarah has her on the ta Oh, no. Oh, Natalia breaks it up. And there are all three women just dancing on top of that table. And Emma whipped in the... With Sarah uh, in the corner, and Sarah gets clotheslined by Natalia. Alabama, what the heck is going on in this matchup? I don't know, even know. They just are reckless in the ring, but I dig that. I respect that. That's some yes, good doing whatever to, Doing whatever it takes to oh, win the women's geez. championship here tonight. Uh, Natalia just smacking Sarah in the face with the table. Natalia trying to set it up. She has the table set up. She has Sarah dazed in the ring. This is the opportunity that Natalia needs to get rid of Sarah. Flesh meets wood win, wins every time, but hopefully, <laughs> uh, hopefully we get another person through this table here. Uh oh, Emma has I love Natalia watching sitting on it. Oh, S Natalia now very close to the going through the table. Oh, is Sarah going to try to oh, guide no. Natalia to the table now? Everyone wants just to put somebody through the table. I think both women just want to put Natalia through the table. Oh, boy. Uh oh, Irish whip now. Natalia in the corner. Getting double teamed by both Emma and Sarah. All three women, only what? one name. Natalia, Emma, Sarah. Of course. And oh, I mean, this is just all chaos here. This is all chaos indeed. As now Emma, oh my goodness, Emma almost broke the table with her foot. That would have been dangerous. That would have been elimination right there. Yes, it would have. Well, here we go. Sarah up to Brett's rope. Has Emma a nice uppercut? Oh my goodness. Yep, the uppercut. What a next. And now Sarah. In what control. a neck. What a nasty European uppercut there by Sarah. There you go. Nice counter from Sarah. Trying to keep the wrist control. Power ball! Oh my goodness. Sarah's back went right off the side of the table. She did not go through it. The match continues. Sarah's still in this. But wow. Yikes. Sarah Man. really lucked out there. Yeah, just, seeing that just made me cringe for a second. Ow. Alabama, how many times have you been put through tables? Quite a few, son. Quite a few. It's Alabama, a are you part of the... I was going to say, Alabama, are you part of the Bills Mafia? No, son. Wait, are we brothers? Wait, what? 
Are we brothers, Christian? Maybe? Keeps calling us son. As now Natalia throwing Emma into the corner. Let's see what Emma... It's a metaphor. Oh! Oh my goodness! I think Natalia just went through the table! Oh my goodness! Yep, you're right. Sarah just pushed Natalia through the table, and we are down at two! <laughs> oh my goodness, I did not see that coming. Natalia going for the ten punches in the corner. Sarah rips her off the turnbuckle and through the table, eliminating her in very interesting fashion. Ring, ring awareness by Sarah there. Fantastic ring awareness. As now Sarah brings in the final table of the match, looking to put Emma through it. Yep. Elbow drop. She's put the first two women through tables. Let's see if she can complete the hat trick. Alabama, they, 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 have hockey. they have hockey in uh, Alabama? You know, a man, I don't know. Hockey is a Canadian thing. Not in the big where hockey doesn't belong in the South. But say that to the uh, Dallas Stars, though. Or the Carolina Hurricanes. Or the Florida Panthers. Or the Tampa Bay Lightning. Or the Nashville Predators. Or the Phoenix Coyotes. That's West, son. That's West. Arizona. West. Look at the map. Uh-oh. Learn your Super geography. Place. It's over. It's over. It's Sarah over. Is your new women's champion in ECW. What a big win there for Sarah. And now Sarah is going to give everyone hugs and smiles because she is now the new ECW women's champion. And now that that uh, that T-shirt makes sense now. Nice title win for Sarah right there for sure. Absolutely a huge win for Sarah, taking out three incredible names and putting all three of them through tables. She did all the work herself. She pulled off the hat trick. Throw your hats in the arena. Yeah, Alabama, throw your hat. No. All right, well, hopefully don't lose we'll your hat you because one. now it's time for The Undertaker to defend his title against Krishna Davari. It's Florida Water Wrestling time, and here we go, folks. The match has already started in the ring at our third location. And ladies and gentlemen, no one said this, but this match is indeed a buried alive match. Match you haven't seen a lot recently. The Undertaker looking to retain his Florida Water Wrestling Championship in the match type that he is the most known for. And a nice right hand there to Davari. Wait a minute. Aren't you aren't you forgetting Jess? Yes. What am I forgetting? The Davari is undefeated in unburied alive matches. He buried oh, Hulk Hogan. He did bury Hulk Hogan. We'll see if he can bury the Undertaker tonight in a huge clothesline from the Take Man. Undertaker, hell of a football player for the state of Texas. Uh oh. Oh, she puts him straight through the table. <laughs> Holy moly! Oh no. You must really, you must really love football. Damn straight, son. Huge football fan. Roll Tide! Oh no, they're up though. No, they're up on the barricade now. They're almost in the fans. Oh no. Oh, and an Irish uh, uh, arm drag off the the barricade there. Undertaker now go behind. Counters through. Davari counters. Flips him over. Knees to the balls. And Undertaker standing strong with a clothesline. Oh no. Undertaker running over to the mound of sand. That's when you know it's almost over. And I forgot to ask About you time guys. About to get buried. Who are you voting for in this matchup? Gotta go with Davari here. Of course, Mr. Koshro Davari is undefeated in the Buried Alive stipulation. And, and uh, I don't think Undertaker's got a chance in hell. There you go, Davari now with a nice elbow. And Alabama, who do you have in this match? I'm going with big old Mark Calloway, Undertaker, son. Hey, somebody tweeted that just... Kansas State's going to beat Alabama. He's wrong. Alabama is king. Alabama's going to destroy that 
he are known as Kansas State. They don't even know how to play football in Kansas. And yes, Christian, he did just say Mark Calloway. I was about to say, did he just break KF? <laughs> He's breaking a lot of things. I do what I do, son. Well, Daddy, you can't be doing that as now the Undertaker gonna try to get him into the casket. Davari, though, slips right between the casket and the, the, the tombstone. And now Davari trying to come back. Nice whip and a nice drop kick on the ground there. You have to say, Damari getting a little dirty in the sand. Uh, I'll into that one, Jess. I mean, so is The Undertaker. It's a lot of sand up there. That is a lot of dirt. There you go, now Davari with the comeback. Undertaker, though, with the counter, knee to the gut. Oh, no. Here it comes, folks. It's the last ride. Powerbomb. Oh. Oh, yikes, right on the dirt. I was going to ask Jess, do you hate the sand? I hate the sand. I live in the ma the beaches of Massachusetts, and I hate the sand. It's the worst part. Do you find it Do you find it coarse, rough, and irritating? Absolutely, and especially it... when it gets in between my toes and my cracks. There's now Undertaker yep. going to throw Davari into the casket here. He's going to try to get him in there. He's pushing it. No, Davari able to slip away, and it looks like he might be busted open a bit from the casket. Oh my goodness, this Davari is just holding his head here. And you gotta think, that's really bad if you're getting, if you're bleeding and you're just getting sand in your wound. It's literally like throwing sand in a wound. It's literally like throwing salt, yeah. And Alabama, have you ever been wounded? Uh, of course, they, I think they just turned off Alabama's uh, microphone here. My bad, son. What were you saying? Oh, I asked if you've ever been in a... Uh... What did I ask him? Uh, have you ever been in a situation where you were wounded, I guess, was the oh, question. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been wounded? No, son. <coughs> oh, no. Tavari now dragging the Undertaker near the casket. Not even a paper cut? Nope. Oh, she's you lucky bastard. Davari is so hurt we he Alabama. couldn't even capitalize on the taker. We Alabamians are tough people. Oh, a huge. Speaking of tough, a huge suplex there from Taker. Like right in, almost into the casket. Yeah, nearly. And now Taker going to whip him around. Davari now. We're going to put him in the casket. Let's see if he goes in. And he's in. And ladies and gentlemen, it is over. No! Davari gets his hand up. Davari escapes My the casket. He's just getting out in the next. Time. Oh, she's an Undertaker just using the shovel, trying to bury this man. Right here tonight, oh, another shovel shot to the face. Shades of Triple H here, getting the shovel out. Here you go, Undertaker now, trying to get him. <laughs> this could be the last. Oh no, Davari slips away. He slips under, and a Russian leg sweep. Anyone could do a Russian leg sweep these days, though. Here you go, knee to the gut, punch to the gut, Davari trying to, yes, pick a part taker there. You have Jared had a mean leg sweep. He did, you know, didn't he? You know where Jeff Jarrett's from? And I seen. Mobile, Alabama. No, I'm kidding. Oh no, Davari now with the whip. Davari now trying to get taker in the casket. No. Uh, oh? Undertaker able to escape. There's still a little bit of, uh, a little bit more that Davari has to do. He said he has to do everything just to put Taker in the cast. Look at Davari. He's just bleeding profusely now into the, oh no. <laughs> oh no, Undertaker's in the casket. Is he going to get his hand up? 
Come on. No, it's over. New champion? And another new what? champion, your winner. And new Florida Water Wrestling Champion, Davari. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new champion. Unbelievable. And in the match that Undertaker might have made famous, Davari once again proves that he is the king of the burial. That's an upset. Some would say so, but others might have to agree that Davari is the Florida Water Wrestling World Champion. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, may the reign of Undertaker rest in peace. 365 days later, we have a new champ. And now, speaking of new champs, it's time for the RTBW Tag Team Championship to be decided between these four teams. Of course, a tag team free for all. Yep, and you know the rules of tag team free for all? Pinfalls and submissions count anywhere. It's four way elimination. Every member of a team must be pinned or submitted for their team to be eliminated. So essentially, somebody could win this entire thing on their own. But introducing first, he is big money, Jimmy Chimmel. Of course, big money, Jimmy Chimmel. Uh, of course, we, uh, you can call you can call him the kind man. You can call him whatever you please. Just call him late for supper. And right now, he wants to be called the tag team champions here tonight. And speaking of tag team champions, here's his tag team partner, the misfit, Dan Ramon. Oh, there he goes. Forgot I skipped that entrance. Oopsies. <coughs> and here we go, folks. Introducing the next team. Just kidding. And here we go, folks. Here comes the next team. Here they are. It's the champs. First, Charles Chungus. One half the RTBW Tag Team Champions alongside his partner Trevor Murdoch. Sexy Trevor Murdoch, rather. These two fan favorites came together at the start of Season 2 and really just took over the Tag Team Division. Why is a man of class like Trevor Murdoch teaming up with a coward like Charles Chungus who wears a mask? Because he's sexy, Alabama. Because he's sexy as Charles Chungus. Very. He did win the, the wand from, from Team Sexy's Dusty Rhodes in Season 1. And there's Trevor Murdoch what? already in the ring. That was fast. Whatever, whatever happened to that wand? Oh no, and here they come, folks. It's the D-Team. <laughs> the D-Team bought off their recent loss of the Tag Team Championship match against the Prestige and Death Watch, now they get a shot at another set of tag team titles. Of course, uh, Mac and Dr. Wombo here. Um, could you say at least two-fourths, two-thirds of the, of the D-team? Um, these two uh, looking to get, get some gold for their uh, lovely faction they got put together. Uh-oh. Here we go, folks. He is one half the Mexicals. Psychosis. And his tag oh, yeah. team partner. Oh no. It's Golga. Oh what a what a great tag team we have here. Who could ever forget Two Psychosis and Golga? The New Mexicals. Oh everyone everyone uh put your Golgas in chat. Wave your hands from side to side. It is for the Ring the Bell Wrestling 07 legend, Hall of Favor himself, looking to reap the tag team titles. We all know Goga, a former 
Hardcore champion, of course, as you mentioned, a Hall of Famer. And now tonight we'll see if Golga can get one more belt to his name. Here we go, folks. Eight men. We gotta have one team's left standing. Let's see who does it. Here we go. Folks, I'll do my go best. With the D team. You gotta you're going with the D team? Yeah. You know they're northerners, right? Yes. Okay. I was just checking. Jimmy Chimmel with a nice uh moonsault there. Uh oh, we I got a pin on the outside. Charles Chungus has been eliminated already by the Mac. You see, you can't trust a masked wrestler. Funny to say that, but it's, it's funny you say that because I was gonna say that my favorite, uh, my team that I think is gonna win this are the te team of Psychosis and the Golga, uh -oh. <laughs> because I love I love makeshift tag teams and I love them being able to prove themselves and I think they can prove themselves here tonight. There you go. Trevor Murdoch has a pin on Noah, but no, the referee couldn't get back fast enough. <coughs> I'll see now who's able to get the advantage. It is now 1v2v2v2, as the champions are at a disadvantage early on. You know, Charles Chungus has to wrestle later on tonight, so I'm assuming he wanted to save his energy for that holiday championship match. Of course, Jimmy Chimmel just, uh, as I said, big money Chim Chimmel just wanting a shot at the tag team titles here. And yes, he's got it. And man, he's doing some tremendous work on Golga here on the outside. Yeah, nice face buster from Psychosis. Referee doesn't notice. And now into the cover. Hook at the far leg, two. And no, Psychosis kicks out at two. And somebody tweeting Alabama needs a translator. I don't need a goddamn translator. He says he doesn't need a gosh darn translator. Oh! Goddamn translator. Tennessee Jam missed by Psychosis, or as he calls it, a Guadalajara Jam. They from Guadalajara? I believe so. And now under the cover, Trevor Murdoch has the cover on Wombo. Referee counting from the outside, too. No. <laughs> oh, Tennessee Jam, Guadalajara Jam from Psychosis, but we have a million dollar dream on the outside, on Golga, and Golga taps out, and that's it, so no, uh, oh, and the Wombo is knocked out, one, two, three, and the Mac is eliminated, the D-team is out in a matter of seconds. Can you believe it? Wow, well, we're down to four. No, Dr. Wombo... The referee said that Dr. Wombo was unable to finish the match after that big boot from Trevor Murdoch. And then Mac gets pinned by Psychosis off the Guadalajara Jam. Of course, we are down to our final four. I mean... Yeah, final four. Did you ever and we still have a full team left. It's Chimmel and Ramon still left in the match together. Oh no, nice counter there from Murdoch. Counters the spear into a DDT. And that might be it. No, only a one count. Alabama, have you ever been in a tag team? No, by used to manage one. Which one? used to call them vicious and delicious 2.0 oh interesting and here we go into the cover trevor murdoch dragging oh he dragged dan ramon away from the ropes but it might have dragged him a little too far i also I didn't know managed, if saw that i also I managed a tag team called the righteous but that didn't work out as well oh wait a sec dan ramon now eliminated on that uh that lowdown and a Trevor Murdoch destroyer on to psychosis one two no psychosis kicks out of the destroyer I think Murdoch calls out the ace of spades great good a great uh destroyer there but just not enough to take down the uh, psychosis there you go nice maneuver beautiful there from Beautiful 
There you go. Drops and a big splash there. That could be it. Two. No. I, I think uh, right, Chimmel. Son. What are you saying? I think Chimmel needs to. Uh, I, I think Chimmel needs to stop playing around though. He needs to get on the offense instead of taunting and saying he's got all the money. But I think he might be working on that right now. Yeah, I don't remember how the gimmick change happened either, because he was so kind, and now he's a rich uh, rich girl, as they say. Hey. Hey, money changes people. He got rich. <coughs> he has a new attitude. He's sick I mean, of he... being a, a gimmick. I mean, if I... If I... If... I, if I gave you a million dollars, she would probably tell me that you like Creed too. <laughs> well, you could take me higher anytime you want, Christian. As Psychosis. Uh oh. Psychosis trying to stop Jimmy. Jimmy with the frog splash and eliminates Trevor Murdoch. We are guaranteed to have new champions. We are guaranteed new champions indeed. It's down to the kind man. Or Come now on, Jimmy. Don't let that mask-wearing idiot win this. Oh, well, now the rich man taking on Psychosis. Psychosis going up now. Looking for another Guadalajara jam. He, oh, he barely hits it. Barely gets it, but... But the rope break. Gets on the left. Yeah, right into the rope break. And now Chimmel back up again. Psychosis hooks him for the suplex. Has him up. Chimmel sneaks out of it. Gets the go behind. Rudy fruiting. Okay. All oh, Rudy. And now let's see what Jimmy Chimmel has in store. Hooks both arms. Gonna spin him around. Oh my goodness, what a submission hold from Chimmel. Oh, and just... He calls that the million dollar lock. The million dollar lock, is that gonna do it? It is. It's over. We got new champions. New champions indeed. Here they are, folks. Your winners and new tag team champions, Jimmy Chimmel and Dan Ramon. Those are the real champions you see right there, man. You got a great gentleman from UK, and you got a world class known as Jimmy Chimmel, bringing the belts back to your relevancy. And Chimmel. Celebrating by himself. Dan Ramon nowhere to be seen. Hopefully we can get that belt to Dan soon. And from one tag team titles to the next tag team titles, Christian Rock, what's this matchup all about? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this match is a tag team match to determine the number one contenders for Jess and Mikey's tag team titles. Unfortunately, they can't defend their tag titles tonight due to the triple threat match. So this match is going to be between... The Strawberry Blondes and the Authors of Pain. And here they are, folks. The Strawberry Blondes. Of course, on the left. It, it is, uh, uh... Left, it is... Je well, you're asking someone who has a delayed monitor. But, of course, we have Jerry and Joey. Uh, J Joey is the one with the smiley face uh, shaved on his chest. Jerry, the one with the mullet. And, of course, these guys signed out of uh, Wor Worcester, Massachusetts. Been kind of popular on the independent scene. And tonight, they're looking to make to make themselves a big name, possibly beating the authors of pain for the tag team title opportunity. I'll tell you what, son. i tell you why I scouted these boys. They got the talent. They could be the next future tag team champions. Yeah, they might be the only good thing to ever come out of Worcester. That's for sure, and here we go, folks. Introducing their opponents. They are Razor and Akum, the authors of pain. Akum, Razor, the authors of pain. Uh, well, no Paul Ellering here tonight. He's probably uh, missed his flight. So, but, well, that and there's no managers during tornado tag team contest. But hey, Authors of Pain looking at, uh, at to get a big win and possibly become the number one contenders for Mikey and Justice Tag Team titles. It could be. 
And folks, you feel free to vote in the chat of who you think is going to win this number one contendership opportunity. Christian, who do you have going for you as you are the big ECW guy here? It's hard to say. I hate to say it, but unfortunately for the Strawberry Blondes, I think this is going to be a massacre. I think I got the authors of pain winning this match here tonight. I mean, just look at these boys. They're just intimidating. Alabama, what about you? Gotta go with the Strawberry Blondes, man. Well, currently right now, 100% of viewers are gonna are voting for the Authors of Pain. But, uh... Other than that, we'll see what happens here. The Strawberries are ready, the Authors are ready, and let's get it going. And someone in the chat said, easy win for AOP. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. I, a lot of people thinking this could be a, a runaway victory for the Authors of Pain. However, we have seen cracks in their armor before. They're not a perfect. They're big, but they're not perfect. They're not necessarily indestructible, but it's kind of a, sm a small gap in the armor to really find. Hey, but once you do it, you know, makes a heck of a lot easier, you know. And here we go now. It looks like you said Joey had the mullet. Joey had Joey has the oh, no, Joey's uh, smiley chest here. Joey just grabbed a kendo yes. stick. And who has the mullet? Jerry. Jerry. So right now, Jerry gonna work on. I believe that's Razor. Joey's got. Uh, uh, I, was, I mean, oh, all man. these teams here have uh, uh, like very a lot of tag team experience. So it'd be interesting to see who can actually just come out on top. Even though I still think it's going to be an absolute dominate, uh, oh, dominating display here. Acom just squeezed the life out of Joey and then just or uh, Jerry and then just room against the ropes, his neck bouncing off of every rope, and then throwing Joey off the top turnbuckle. These authors Could are in control here. These authors are monsters. Oh man. They are the monster of their own story. Looking to write the last chapter. Oh, but the strawberries are coming back. Spins them around. Nice head scissors there. From Jerry. What a move there. Oh! Joey ends up saving his tag team partner there. That could have been a big move. Go behind. Has him up. Big back body drop. Oh no, he holds on. Into a German suplex. Oh, and then Akum breaks it up. <coughs> Akum saving his tag team partner from the third suplex. And Razor going into the turnbuckle now. What? This has been absolutely unbelievable. I I mean I didn't expect the Strawberry to Blondes put uh, put up such a fight here. Alabama, what's your favorite fruit? My favorite fruit? Alabama's favorite fruit. Uh, but, but what's your favorite fruit? Christian? Uh, I gotta go for the banana. Let's do. <laughs> of course. We'll kick out at two there. Alabama doesn't eat fruit, he eats vegetables. Okay, weird flex, but sure. Oh no. For the last time, to tomatoes and fruit. Despite what VeggieTales tells you, folks. Oh no. Acom with a nice neck breaker. Countering in this two on one. That the strawberries had now basically gone is now AOP has the two on one. And there you go, Russian light sweep from Razar. It's over, and the authors of pain are the new number one contenders. Great win there for the authors of pain, and they're gonna probably meet Mikey and Jess in just a few weeks. I mean. I mean, I would celebrate this moment right now. You can because 
Mikey and Jess are pretty good as a tag team. So, uh, Authors of Pain, look out. Yes, look out indeed. And speaking of the tag team champions, it is now time for the Ring the Bell Wrestling Championship ladder match between the Amazing Jess, Dom, and Mikey. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a battle between friends, battle between <coughs> bookers, battle for the one of the richest prizes in our sport, hang, hanging at least 15 feet in the air. Let's do it. Okay, here we go first. Folks, introducing first, he is the son of a buffalo, Dom. Yes, Alabama, you were saying something. You didn't say anything. Uh, but Dom, he's going to win the belt. You, you're going with Dom tonight. Yeah. You never know. You, maybe this will hurt the chemistry between Mikey and Jess, but Dom is in the favorable position to take home the belt. I mean, that is a good point. You do have two tag team champions in this matchup. And they, they could be at odds here. <coughs> you know, how much do you want to you hurt your fellow tag team partner? But you gotta remember, there's no love loss between Mikey and Dom either. Mike, he still hates Dom for, to this day as being a part of the Disney Alliance. So, you know, that is of course, very true. Mikey has probably got his sights set on keeping the championship while inflicting some punishment on Dominic. Yeah, and of course, the amazing Jess currently in the midst of his feud with Jay Charleston, which will be fully uh, f finished come our next pay-per-view. But tonight, he has the opportunity to win the championship that he's never really had an opportunity for in the 07 championship. You gotta think. We said this earlier, the three bookers. Of course, it is no surprise that Dom and Jess's fingerprints have been all over Ring the Bell Wrestling 2007. And of course, Mikey being the, the front runner, this man right here, basically being the flag bearer for ECW. And tonight, he walks in as the RTBW 2007 champion. Of course, that belt is hanging above the ring tonight. Mikey's not coming down with it. But he is hoping to leave with it after this match. I gotta say, guys, I'm very excited for this matchup. What about you guys? Yeah, it should be a good one. This is gonna be an interesting triple threat against three great wrestlers. It should be indeed. And we're gonna work on Christian Rock getting back. But he's then. back, but I, I I wanted to make a statement about your argument there. I don't think Mikey just sees himself as the flag bearer of ECW. I see him the as the flag bearer of every promotion that these guys have touched. I mean, think about it. Even in his starting days, Mikey has literally put himself through the ringer to get to where he is now, and now he sits on top of the world as the Ring the Bell Wrestling 07 World Champion. So, I would argue that at least for Ring the Bell Wrestling 07, he is also the flag bearer as we, as we speak. As we speak indeed. And here we go, folks. It's time to get it on. Triple Threat style. Who do you guys have in this matchup? I'm going I mean, with Dom. Why Dom? Because I said this earlier that you got Mikey and Jess in the ring. Dom has a good chance of winning here because you got a tag team and they could help their dissension. That is true. It's Mike, not rock and science. Christian Rock, how about you? I think that Mikey and Jess are well aware of the, ampl uh, the uh, ramifications of how a triple threat match works. So I don't think Dom really has an advantage in, the, in this contest. If anything, I think I'm going to give the advantage to Jess. 
Jess is kind of the wild card. I mean, he hasn't have any ho uh, noticeable hostility between the, either of the two. So maybe Mikey and Dom might just turn on each other and Jess just capitalize on it. No, that's an interesting point, too. I understand both sides here. There's a lot of entangled webs between these three men. And arguably, this is why this matchup is so interesting. The fact this has never happened before is insane, too. I mean, of course. You have, you have three major powers in Ring the Bell. ECW, Florida Water Wrestling, basically the three owners all fighting for this championship tonight. As I said, as Mikey and Dom are fighting on the other side, Jess is looking to go get the championship himself. There you go, and of course, Mikey pulling Dom off, but not pulling Jess off. Jess is still up there, unlocking some of those. Of course, we have that high-tech locking system that shows you when the, the, the superstars were able to get a pin undone. There's eight pins. Jess was able to get two of them, and so six more remain. The pins don't reset. They're always, once, it, they're, once it's off, it's off. It's, oh my god. Some blunt force trauma there to Dom's neck with Mikey's elbow connecting. Hey, uh, As... Alabama, does your does your uh, monitor work? Oh uh, my I... goodness, sorry, it was a monitor test. Yeah, my monitor works. Good. I have to take this phone call. You're the new uh, you're the new play by play. Have fun. Yes, go with a backbreaker on Dom, and now he's taunting. Yes, now going to the corner with Mikey. Tosses him to the corner. Yes, about to do, but Mikey reverses. Mikey with a kick. Sends him to the corner. And now he's sitting up a ladder. And now he's just staring at Jess. And now Mikey sets up a ladder and now realizes this is time, but no. Jess punching back and forth. And I power bomb or a alley you bomb to my to be sure. Followed by a knee strike and he knocks him out, damn it. Pressure really, work. You, you got need to climb to the say? ladder though. Mikey up. Going to climb the ladder. Dom's up there. They're battling up back and forth. Fist after fist and now Mikey. Mikey! He no. goddamn broke his back, damn it! He broke oh his my... goddamn back! Oh and my Mikey god! Made the and now Jess went with a knee shot! And now he has the ladder. And now he's setting it up. And this could be the chance he does. Climbing up the ladder. No! What is he doing? Oh no. Hey, this is not good. Oh! He caught him! He caught him! He goddamn caught him! Oh my god! It ain't ooh! -hoo. What and a one what strength angle. there! What Mikey a what strength him up. there! And now Mikey looking for that. No, he countered. You got anything to say there, Christian Rock, son? That's as unbelievable. The absolute strength of. Mikey to catch Jess diving off the top of a ladder is unbelievable. He's alive. Dom is alive. And now Mikey just going back and forth. Meanwhile, Dom just sees him, watches Jess go down, and oh now Mikey goodness, has guys, the I'm strap. Back. What did I miss? Oh, so yeah, oh my god, you missed a lot. Oh my god, it's a power bomb. This match is crazy. Holy moly, oh, there it goes. Dom. Spin kick from Dom. Buffalo he shot by Dom. Dom has the ladder, but Mikey's up. Mikey. Mikey and, with Ooh, a... nice rolling thunder bomb by Mikey there, and Dom is running outside. Or all rolling right, I got, outside. I got, I got the play by play back. Thank you, Bama. I appreciate you. Thank you for all your hard work. There's now Mikey going to the top now. Oh, no. The top, top. My, oh, my goodness, just caught him. Mikey with the what cross body. doing the same thing Mikey did earlier. Mikey just got caught by Jess in midair. My goodness. 
Oh, no. It's almost like they did the same spot earlier. Oh no. They're on top of the ladder. Oh shoot. Mikey though. He has him hooked. Super Oh my no! Oh Oof. just to the outside. Mikey. Jess looks dead. Oh my goodness. I think everyone's <laughs> just dead now. Mikey's the last Holy... man standing. And he this is a perfect opportunity for him. There he goes, six pins. Oh no, wait, Dom is back in there. Oh. Dom. With a series of rights. Oh, and Mikey falls. Oh this my goodness, it. that was the best opportunity he could have gotten there. And oh no, Dom now. Huge crossbody misses from Mikey. Mikey rolls out of the way, Dom. Oh no. Has him up, Mikey, with the finishing maneuver. I forget what he calls it. The, sh the well, that's oh. just a one-winged angel. One-winged angel into the Mikey Lee knee. Or as he calls it, the Lee knee. Oh no. Now Jess and Mikey up to the top by themselves. We saw what happened last time. Mikey might be looking for another superplex at this point. No, Jess with a counter. Oh no. Jess gonna get it? some revenge. Oh my good superplex to Mikey on the outside. Dom now in the ring. Picks up Jess. Spin kick. Buffalo Soldier. Oh my goodness. And now Dom. Everyone's stunned. This is his opportunity. And folks. This is the best chance. The Booker of Ring the Bell Wrestling 2007 is now your champion. Buffalo Dom with a big win right there. <coughs> he has taken the strap. That's another blow to Mike and the Mike and Mike connection. Another blow to, uh, to this company. And of course, th however, this is a massive plus for the Disney Alliance. The Disney Alliance gains the championship tonight. And your winner, Dom. Here we go, folks. It's now time for the ECW Championship match. We have Lionheart Chris Jericho versus the American Dragon, Daniel Bryan. Of course, Daniel Bryan winning this World Championship just a couple of months ago. This is his very first event. And why not? And how come? Uh, I mean, you could argue this is probably the best possible person to take... take um, well, take him on for the, as his first challenger. <coughs> yes, I would agree so. So here he comes, folks. <coughs> the darkness has settled over the arena. That can only mean one thing. The Lionheart Awakens. It should be an instant classic here. You got the Lionheart, one of the best wrestlers in the world, taking on a legit dragon. So this one should be a slobber knock. What have I become? The question is, is he a real... Are I... As I say, are either of these guys... Are you singing Judas right now? No, keep going. Keep talking. Of, of course. Chris Jericho. Uh, that Judas of professional wrestling... And of course, if ECW original act as well. If you want to argue that, so Mr. Uh, Chris Jericho could become the Ocho that and win the ECW championship. Wait, wouldn't that make him the Nueve? I guess it would make him the Nueve. Judas in, Judas in my mind. Woo! Look at the crowd cheering for the Lionheart. Of course, a massive Sarah fan in the crowd asking. Uh, 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 well, I think unfortunately the Sarah fan that just came late to the arena and just real didn't realize that uh, <laughs> Sarah already, uh, Sarah already competed. But that's okay. This is the co main event of the evening, and you could always rewatch this show back on the Ring the Bell Wrestling Network. That's true. You can always go back and see how good Sarah did in that match, and how many people she eliminated potentially. 
And here we go, folks. How many tables were broken? Probably three. ECW champion, American Dragon, Daniel Bryan, making his way to the ring. For I believe that this is his first defense, correct? That, that is correct. His very first defense as the ECW champion. And what a... And what a challenger he's got to defend the championship against. One mess, one mess, great man. Oh. The fans don't like that song as much. But here we go, folks. ECW Championship on the line. Two men, one belt. Let's get it on. There's a referee just slowly taking the belt. This is our prenuptial match. An ultimate. An ultimate match. Of course, stick around for the main event. It is the Holiday Championship Elimination Extreme Elimination Chamber match, but right now, the final world title is on the line between these two, and here we go, folks. Alabama. It should be an interesting match. Yeah, I was going to say, Bam, I believe that you went for Jericho earlier. Yeah, Jericho should have an edge here. He's been to everywhere, even Japan, but so has Brian. But to me, I think with more experience, Jericho has this. There you go, and Mr. Rock, who do you have in this matchup? I am a man that believes that a younger man has more fire and passion in his heart. And I don't, and I truly believe that Daniel Bryan oh, no. is not... Cattle mutilation! Not oh. Jericho I believe out. Daniel Bryan is... I was gonna say I'm one to believe that Daniel Bryan will not let go of that championship until he uh, until he doesn't uh, uh, breathe anymore. So I think it's gonna be da uh, I think Daniel Bryan's retaining the title tonight. All right, folks. So we'll find out in due time as the Lionheart able to get out of the Callum mutilation pretty fast, which is a good sign. Bryan now fireman's carry up and over. Has Jericho Irish whip. Into the ropes and a nice arm drag there from the technician. Aren't they both technicians? I mean, technically. Technically, yes. <laughs> from the other technician. Jericho rolls to the outside to get his breath and able to sneak back in. Land a kick, but Brian back in control. Nice European uppercut from the Washington native. Of course, Daniel Bryan and Chris Jericho have at least combined a total of 60 years of pro wrestling experience. We got Lionheart with a nice knee to the back. Jericho's up. Up on Brett's rope. And a nice double axe handle from Mr. Lionheart. And you gotta say, you gotta look back on history. Chris Jericho, one of the greatest tag team wrestlers with Jericho. You also Jericho forget that... Uh, you also forget that Daniel Bryan, also a tag team expert, as he was uh, had some massive tag team experience with none other than Team Hell No. Now that's a good tag team. And if you think about it, Kane and the Big Show were once tag team champions. That is like also this, true. I feel like this match was written in the stars. A million miles away? Seems like it. But tonight, it's right here. That's the best part. We don't got to worry about the million miles away. Because we get to enjoy it. Daniel Bryan now back in the ring, and he's swinging the kendo stick. And you have to think, Daniel whoever, Bryan? whoever wins this match up. Right? You think whoever wins this match? Zack Ryder has to be next in line. Big Woo Woo with a big loss earlier tonight. Well, maybe. If that's if that's how professional wrestling works, it's a little weird. But, of course, Daniel Bryan just was pelting him with that stick. So, oh, going back to the stick, from, it looks like. Yeah, there you go. Another kendo stick shot. Brian now throwing that kendo stick out of the ring. Getting Jericho up. Big drop kick in the corner. But no, Jericho counters it with a bulldog. Great maneuver there by Jericho. Great counter there. 
Alabama, how many times have you seen Jericho wrestle? I've seen him many times wrestling. Really good wrestler. But how many times have you seen Brian wrestling? <laughs> I've seen him a many times as well. And you've never wrestled either one of them. I'm a commentator. I'm too out of shape <laughs> to wrestle. Man, you're the Hall of Fame. You ever even wrestled Brian Danielson? Or Lionheart Chris Jericho? Interesting. How long ago has it been since the last time you wrestled? Oh, big roundhouse kick from Brian. Lands on wrestled. Jericho. We'll see if that's it. No, only a two count. Just pelting him in the head with his I'm, shin. Yeah, I'm sorry, Alabama. Oh, wait a second. He's getting him up. Here we go. Yep, he's got him hooked into the belt lock. It's locked in on Jericho. This could be it. Could be it. We can see a tap out right here. No, Jericho gets out. Alabama, you were saying something earlier? I said that I didn't wrestle. No, Jericho into the oh. cover. Hooks. Kick out at zero. Of course, I mean, he's going to have to do a lot more than just kick him in the sternum just to keep him down. We're going out Jericho, whipping him into the ropes again. We saw this worked well earlier for him with that bulldog out of the corner. Brian counters. We never like to see Brian get somebody in a corner. Oh, no. Over the top, and a leg drop. Oh, my goodness. Did you ex did you expect him to be able to do something like that? No, especially not onto the hardest part of the ring. And the Dragon Sleeper from the American Dragon locked in. Jericho might have to oh, he, tap he, here. He's just choking him out here. Nope, Jericho able to flip him off. And a nice vertical suplex. One, two, no, kick out at two. This said there it's gonna take a lot more than that to take keep Daniel Bryan down. Yep, Jericho now with the up and over. Alabama Oh! Code breaker! Code breaker. Unbelievable! Is this over? Almost. Jericho now. Slowly, methodically trying to get him back up. Very interesting. He never went for a cover. He knows that it's going to take more to put Danielson away. A whole lot more. All that and a bag of chips. And I love chips. Alabama, what's your favorite type of chip? Barbecue. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. That's now Jericho. Damn into... right. Nothing wrong with some nice smoky barbecue out of the great state of Alabama. Forgot about that Alabama barbecue. Jericho now taunting to the crowd trying to get some fan support behind him. And these two fan favorites really aiming for that crowd support here. The, the fans are loving this. The fans are the real winners tonight. They, they really straight. are. Now Jericho, Lion Tamer locked in. He has oh, once the, he gets the torque on the neck. Back of, once he gets that knee into the back of his head, I think it might be all no, over. Brian able to get out of it. But yeah, you're right. It does not look like he was able to get the full torque on that neck. And that would have made, oh no, the elbows. Repeated elbows from Brian Danielson. Or Daniel Bryan. I the think. hammer and anvil elbows. What does he go by? Can you just say Brian Danielson at this point? Daniel. I guess you can. Wouldn't hurt. There you go, Jericho now with a big back body drop on a Danielson. Two. No. Oh, man, what a great ECW <laughs> championship match this has turned out to be. I agree. And now, going up to Brett's rope again. Let's see what Jericho has in store. Oh, and he misses the senton splash. Oh no, he has a triangle. The triangle choke is locked in. And another submission from oh Danielson. 
He's looking just to choke him out here. Yeah, you saw the label lock, you saw the cattle mutilation, and he taps out. He tapped out for the triangle, it's over. That's it. Brian he retains. retains. Brian Danielson retains his ECW championship. After four... Danielson retains, huh? Yeah, he hit the cattle mutilation early on, the label lock. And we saw the, uh, the, the triangle do it tonight. And the dragon as sleeper I said, as well. Uh, as he lives and breathes, he was never going to give up. And he was able to <laughs> choke him out here tonight. And a huge victory for the people's champion, Brian Danielson. Uh-oh. What's going on? Wait a sec. That's oh, Kevin K.O. Owens. That's, That's Kevin Owens. What is he doing here? My God. Owens. Owens. What is he doing in the Eastern Zone? I have no idea, but I think he's making a statement here tonight that he wants the ECW Championship. Oh no. We've seen this before. This move has ended careers. This move took out Jericho at one point. It did. Oh no. And he's about to... Powerball! He goddamn broke his back! Oh my gosh! We're all aware of the neck that Brian Danielson has. That we know that's not gonna be good for business. As Kevin and Owens leaves with his head held high, and here we go, folks. It is the finals, the six man holiday championship elimination match as Jason D. Davis, Dax Hardwood, Batista, Charles Chungus, Samoa Joe, and Buzzsaw Louie compete. Of course, Buzz saw Louis. He is Santa's <laughs> little helper. He's trying to save Christmas. And here we go, folks. Introducing first. He is Dax the Axe Hardwood. Now, this is a wrestler, my friend. Dax Hardwood. Very talented wrestler. Tonight, he'll make a statement inside the spacious. Elimination Chamber against five other competitors. This is my favorite. And he has a great shot too. He's not one or two, which means he has definitely a better advantage over the last two people that come out here. The question is, does Dax have, I mean, we know that he loves the holidays. So the question is, does he have the heart to fight like an eight year old girl? He better hope so. Dax gets off the jacket and he's gonna head into the first pod over here. The pod opens up to accept Harwood. And here we go. He's in. And here comes number two, Jason D. Davis. Davis hot off a huge victory in Ring the Bell Wrestling against Ethan Wood. Ethan Wood's right? Ethan Hood. He's so mean. He's yeah, he's so bad hood. I forgot his name. But Jason D. Davis, representing the D team and representing Ring the Bell Wrestling 2007, has a huge opportunity to bring the holidays ho 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 home to to uh to do you think he got, Beach. Do, do you think he got a fixing so that he doesn't have to come out as one or two? Oh, probably. He's one of my friends, and I we know I recorded the match, we, so yeah. It, I was gonna say, you know Jason's probably got all them connections. He does have the connections indeed. As he takes the shirt off, the glasses stay on, and he heads into that second pod. And we'll see where he comes out. In the in the in the in the, the three through six numbers. Oh, here he is, Santa's helper, Buzz Saw Louie. Uh, it's probably good that Santa, he probably got uh, he's, he got his number, his little gift to come in a little bit later in the match as Buzzsaw Louie wants to save Christmas for the North Pole. Yeah, he's this guy is a psychopath. He shouldn't be allowed inside the elimination chamber with that Tyrion saw. And you gotta say... Well, he's not going in there with the saw. Yeah, he's not going in there with the saw. Yeah, see, look, he just threw the saw down and he's gonna walk in by himself 
Of course, we all know that Buzzsaw Louie knows the true meaning of Christmas. And tonight on the holidays, he's looking to deliver that news to everybody in the ring. Look at him staring down Jason, staring down Dax. And now he heads into the third pod. Uh-oh. Wow. And the final member who gets a pod... The Samoan Submission Machine, Samoa Joe. From Huntington Beach, California, weighing in at 282 pounds. This man is a beast. Joe is, in fact, a beast representing ECW, a former ECW X Division champion. I believe. No, that was wrong. Or was it? The man with all the notes isn't talking to me, so that's fine. <coughs> but Samoa Joe gets a very good number here as he also gets a pod to himself. And we'll see. I mean, that gives him a huge advantage, Alabama. That's for damn sure. He has a good shot to win this match, but I still think Dak Howard will win this one. You still think? I mean, he has a great shot. One out of four. Anywhere between three and six, and now we can use process of elimination to see who's coming out first and second. But oh, here he is, the current RTBW Holiday Champion, the Animal Batista. Now you've got a guy who's going into his own territory. You got the Animal Batista. You put him inside a cage, and he'll do some scary things. Of course, representing Florida Water Wrestling. He won last year's matchup. He's held the belt for a full year. Of course, original holder, Charles Chungus, must be number two. Based solely on, uh, you know, who's not in a pod right now. So the two former holiday champions are starting this match out. Batista. Gonna be the third favorite to win this match. Your third favorite? Yes, third favorite. I have three favorites. Who's your second? Jackson. Joe Samoa Joe. Oh, okay. And here comes Damn your right, fourth. son. Your fourth favorite's gonna come out real soon. And your fifth and sixth favorite are already in the pods themselves. And here we go, folks. The man who drew number two in his second match of the night, Charles Chungus. Here comes the coward. Who wears a mask? Like, seriously, show your face. Of course, when Chungus started this night, he was one half of the tag team champions, and hopefully, by the end of it, he can at least leave with some gold, becoming the first ever two-time holiday champion. Because <laughs> Alabama, you gotta say, these six men are the most deserving of being in this holiday matchup. Exactly. Alright, Chungus now getting prepared. He sees Batista, he's eyeing the other competitors. And here we go. Christian, is your monitor back up? I believe it is. There we go. Just in time. Who do you have winning this elimination chamber? I think the true meaning of Christmas is upon us. So I'm going to go with my buddy, Buzzsaw Louie. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. Alabama has like three or four favorites right now, but I think his main favorite is Dax Harwood. And a nice elbow drop. We'll see if that changes. And a nice springboard moonsault. And the Mexican sensation flying all over the ring. Of course, Chungus, I'm surprised he's able to compete <coughs> in this match. He did just have a match for the tag titles not too long ago. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I Charles agree. Chungus doesn't deserve to be in this match. Uh -oh. He's a coward. Speaking of people being in this match, we're about to have another person enter in four seconds. Who 
has drawn number three. Oh no, oh. it's Dax. Oh! Dax is our My number favorite. three. Your favorite's out pretty early, Alabama. Spear! 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 Doesn't matter, he'll get it done. He is a man that believes in no flips, just fists. He loves a good and strictly fisting. wrestling. I think everyone loves a good fisting. Two. No, only a two count. Chungus kicks out. Not enough fisting to take down Chungus there. You know, Dax sets his sights on the animal <coughs> with a nice series of strikes and back to Chungus. Trying to work both men, and here we go. The counter is going down again. Spine Buster from Batista. Uh -oh. Crazy to think that this uh, this is our main event. This has been a fantastic contest, by the way. Oh no, here we go. Samoa Joe, a... number four. And it's been a fantastic show. I'm glad we did this together. Hey, I'm glad we did too. I'm glad we made it work. Despite all of our struggles getting in. Joe now working on Batista. Dax working on Chungus as the two former champions or the former and the current are the ones being worked over the most of course run thrown into the corner there let's oh no oh, Dax has him up nice rolling thunder there <coughs> or rolling senton rather from Dax a little bit of a flip there from the fisting guy. Oh, Joe thrown to the outside by Dax, and here we go. Time to figure out who's fifth. Batista bite. Get him out of there. Could this? Can he tap out? Oh, Davis. Davis is fifth. That means your favorite is sixth, my uh, Christian. Well, of course. The true meaning of Christmas was upon us, and Santa was really had him on the nice list just to give him the number six spot. He's at the Winklings. Uh oh, a in an inverted figure four locked in on Batista now. Dax has it. Could Dax submit Batista? He's gonna tap out. <coughs> he could, but no, Batista able to break out of it. Oh man. So close. Joe now working on Davis. Chungus getting up now. And here we go, folks. Three more seconds, and all six men will be in. Because here comes the true meaning of Christmas, Buzz Salu. Oh, here, here we go. Here we go. Bama, now that all six men are in, do you have any changes? Who do you think is going to win? Oh, stick with my three. Batista, Dax Hardwood, oh my and goodness. Samoa Joe. Well, Batista with a Batista bomb to Joe on the outside there. Oh no. And another one. Batista is up. And Batista bomb. Oh, this could, oh man, this could be over that for Joe be, here. Joe's in a rough place. Two. And no, Joe kicks out at two. Batista, Unbelievable! Take out that mask-wearing idiot, Charles Chungus. <laughs> yeah, I did not see that coming. That's for sure. Davis now working on Louis. Louis with a nice hip toss. Chungus has the arm bar on Joe. Diving elbow drop. Oh no! Batista had another Batista bomb in him. He has Jason up now, and Batista bomb again. <laughs> That's how you do it, son. Joe now into the cover. Anymore. Joe gonna try to steal this cover. No, he kicks out a two. Batista's uh, Batista bomb's getting a little bit uh, weaker in his older age. Emerald Flosion! Emerald Flosion on the Dax! That's it! Two. No! No! Three Dax is eliminated. No! Oh no. And the Kohita Clutch is locked in on Jason as Jason fading. No, Jason able to break out of it. Oh no, into the cover. He has Joe. No. <coughs> Only two. 
Well, I still got his prepared for hey. this match. Couldn't, just, just couldn't put him away just yet. No, oh, Jason has a lot of fight in him still left. That's the thing, too, is a lot of these guys, if you've been in here longer, are more tired. But they're ready to, you know, oh my goodness, look at that beautiful maneuver there from Chungus flying through the air. The Phoenix Splash on the bus saw Louie, and it's only a two count. As I was saying, these guys get in there early. They get their finishers ready. Haluba kick from Jason. Batista's bleeding now. And that could be it. No, only two. Oh, man, just... Oh, no. Overdrive! Nobody wins with that move. That's why Jason's setting up for something big here. Oh. <coughs> the pay dirt has been countered by Batista. Oh, no. Emerald explosion oh, no, no, no. on the bus saw Louie. Is Christmas dead? I don't think so. No, only two. Here we go. Three, all these men are going absolutely insane. Bus saw Louis dumped to the outside. Joe going to follow him out there. Come on, Joe. <coughs> destroy Christmas. And now everybody teaming up on Batista in the middle of the ring. No, no, no. Don't do that. Joe and Batista now fighting each other. Oh, no. Is this going to be a third? What are you doing, Animal? But taste a bomb to Joe. This could be all over oh, here. Bust all over no. to steal the cover. One, two, three. It's over. No. And Joe's gone now. That means there's only four left. Maybe Batista loves uh, Chris. This too, so he might have let um, Joe. Oh no! Uh, um, oh wait bust a sec! Batista bomb way. countered. No! One, Not this way! Two, three! Bust no. on It's Batista! Oh my God! He countered the Batista bomb into a three count, and just like that, we're gonna have a new holiday champion this year. Unbelievable! Can Bust we do it? And just like that, all three of Alabama's picks are out. Oh no. Of course, Emerald Man in the Mask, in. Jason D. Davis, and Buzz Saw One, Louis all here in this match. Two. No! Louis kicks out at two. The Emerald Flosion should have done it. Absolute fire in his heart for Buzz Saw <laughs> Louis. Oh no. Jason now setting him up. Paydirt! Paydirt! One, two, three. And then there were two. It's Charles. No, it's Jason D. Davis and Buzzsaw Louie. Who is going to be the holiday champion? On Buzzsaw Louie. Save Christmas. You want to save Christmas here? Jason's stunned. No, Buzzsaw Louie's on a roll here. Into the cover. It's over! Well, Buzzsaw Louie has saved Christmas. He did it! He really Buzzsaw did Louis. It. And no better man, in my mind, can be the holiday champion but the toy who saved Christmas. Buzzsaw Louie. Ladies and gentlemen, Christmas time has come. It, we, I can't believe it. We have a new holiday champion, and it's Buzzsaw Louie, the toy that saved Christmas. You know, Santa's little helper really did a number there on all three, all, all of these men. One of the best matches we've ever seen here. Folks, we want to thank you all for watching tonight. It's been one heck of a show. Am I right? Yeah. Fantastic show. Going. Fantastic show. Happy holidays to everyone indeed. Alabama, anything you want to say? Happy Kwanzaa. Oh, respect. The man from Alabama talking about Kwanzaa. Either way, what a show we have indeed. I have been Excaligus.
And we will see you guys next year for December to December 4. Oh, please. More?